Hey guys, welcome to uh, update number five on my figure painting series and um, this update will focus on the shirt that uh, the figure is wearing underneath his coat and the iron cross that is uh, put on his chest and um, as Sebastian Schoff has told me that he really really fancies me putting on the gloves I thought um, why not put them on with the camera running and uh, Sebastian just uh, remember it's gonna hurt just a little but once I'm in you're gonna enjoy this watch this yeah nice and tight yeah right just like that there you go there you go now how about a little curve and now I'll put on the second glove this is for Julius. Oh yeah, nice and tight once again. Guys, I gotta tell you, those are nice and tight. And um, yeah, after that I'll <laughs> come back to the figure. Uh, I have to excuse myself for the frivolities here right now, but uh, those two guys were, were harping at me for putting on the gloves on the camera. And I just had to get back at them. So, um... The shirt that the guy is wearing underneath his um, SS jacket, I would probably normally paint in a white color. But uh, I think white is just boring. And this is why I'm going to go for this color. This is Ravel Matte 74 uh, Geschütz Gray, so Gunship Gray. But I've uh, put a lot of white in there just to lighten it up. So it's a really, really light gray that I will be putting in in there to paint the shirt he's wearing. As always, try to keep your brush as pointy as possible. Because as long as it's pointy, you can uh, minimize the paint you put at places where you don't want it to be. And this is something very important, especially on small figures like this one. You don't want paint to get in places where it's hard to get it out of and where it could then form paint cloths, paint clots that you then will have trouble cleaning or getting rid of because if you can paint over them there will be too much paint so that the detail is lost. And this is one area where there is a lot of detail especially because of the iron cross that's in there which I will be picking at in a second here this is just delicate here gotta be very careful not to paint over it if you hear something in the background that's probably my girlfriend talking to her rabbits yes she's talking to them and um, yeah So, excuse that. So that will be the gray part here, the grayish part. Okay. So, um, as I said on an earlier video, I'm not, probably not going to paint the interior of the Iron Cross plaque. This is just too fiddly of business for me. Once again, I'm taking out my uh, Ravel 99 aluminum and just will focus on painting the outside of the iron cross. The dark inside of the cross will then be taken care of with a wash which will hopefully set in there and blend in there perfectly once dry. Now I see that I did I made some mistakes while while actually building the figure, apparently, as there is a small gap that I have tr trouble filling right now, but that is not a problem because you can only see it if you really look closely. But I uh, made a boo-boo that I now have to fix. I got some uh, paint on the flesh color, which we absolutely do not want to have. So I get out of my flash color, keep my paintbrush pointy, 
This might be the sentence that I will be using the, mo the most on this entire series. To always keep your paintbrush pointy. As, as long as you have a pointy paintbrush, you will only get paint where you want paint to be. If your paintbrush starts getting, well, out of line, it starts getting difficult to only get it where you want it to go. Alright, so this will be that. And now we once again take out our self made wash, give it a sturdy, long, and careful shake. And now we need to be careful, as this is a small area, and we only want the wash to go in this area. We don't want the wash to get into places where we haven't painted yet, because that could ruin the entire model. Now that's exactly what I wanted it to do. We wanted to accentuate the gap between the head and the shirt. And we wanted to pick out the darkness inside the iron cross. Which is exactly what this wash has done. I think. Now it's acting up a bit, but that's not a problem. And it got into a place where it didn't want it to be. So we take a Q-tip and we try to just take it out of there. And without problem, the Q-tip just takes the wash and takes it away. I might have to put a little tiny bit of black in there just to seal it off. Or, and I will do this first, I'll give this a try. I will take mixed dark wash, which is much, much darker than the self made wash. Once again, keep your paintbrush pointy because you just want the just want the tip of it to be in the color. And then we apply a tiny bit of that, and that's exactly that's what I wanted. That's exactly the result I was trying to achieve. You cannot see this, which is a pity, but you will be able to see this on the pictures. This is exactly what I wanted it to do. It just picked out the interior detail of the iron cross perfectly. So uh, I, I saved myself some paint on the black paint, and uh, I didn't mess it up with the black paint, which I probably would have done had I uh, painted it black. Now, to uh, hyper uh, accentuate the difference between the shirt and the SS uh, uniform, I will be painting at least the color of his uniform so you guys can see the difference. And my girlfriend is still talking to her rabbits. Which I think is hilarious. I really love this grey green paint here that I'm using right now. I I had this for quite some time now and I never used it. And now I'm asking myself, why in the world did you never use it before? Because this picks up this is the exact paint that this uniform type requires. So had I known that before? Well, I probably would have painted many, many more of those uh, SS dudes in those camo, uh, camo uniforms. Or at least I will from now on going forward. Um, this is a shout out now to Hamilton Barkas, who I was talking to on Skype earlier today. And uh, he was really interested in seeing how I uh, do the, the camo scheme and those figures. As he, is, as he said, that's the, the thing that he struggles with most when painting figures. And uh, I'm happy if uh, what I do can even help him become a better figure painter. And uh, yeah, so Michael, uh, this is how. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'll probably be picking on this for quite some time today. Maybe I'll do some off-camera work again, guys. Maybe on the uniform putting down the base color and then showing you guys how to put the camo scheme on it in a later installment of this video series.
because today I'm really in the mood for figure painting and uh, as I have the feeling that I don't want you guys to miss anything I'm kind of inclined to have the camera running the entire time which then would interfere with my girlfriend either talking to her rabbits or watching TV later on so I will probably shut down the camera and do some off-camera work and show you guys the progress in uh, a different video but once I've done the color here we'll show you guys quickly what that does to them the contrast between the as, as uniform color and the shirt underneath because the contrast isn't as stark as you probably would think with the light gray and the green gray on the outside but it is enough to be seen at least for me you will probably struggle picking it up because the camera is so bad right. that seals that part so uh, the next installment will probably really deal with me uh, putting paint on the upper half of his, uh, his torso. Here you can see me, uh, I painted the, the collar. And uh, it really accentuates the detail on the face and on the iron cross and on the shirt. Sadly, the camera is really bad and it just doesn't pick it up. But I will show you guys pictures of that on International Scale Modeler on my build thread for the D-Day group build, which this is a part of. And if you're interested, just go there and uh, give it a look. I would really appreciate it if you guys would comment, as there haven't been many comments from yet. But uh, so you guys who probably who know me a bit better, I'm always up for, for a nice comment. And if you guys want to know anything, just uh, hit me up. Ask me. I will tell you guys whatever you want. Whatever you want to know, I will tell you guys. All right, I just had to fix something here. That's why I took the flash color again. So thank you guys for watching this installment of the video. This dealt with the shirt and the iron cross. Thank you guys for watching. I hope to have you guys around when I do my next part, which will then deal with the uniform. As I told you, I will probably lay down the base color just the same way as I laid down the base color in the head. Just put it on, not too thick let it dry before you start with the camo scheme so this is where I stand right now so you hopefully probably can see but hopefully you can see I really like this fella so far and I hope you like him as well see you guys in the next video may the force always be with you and always remember Sevastopol this is Hollywood Modeling bye